You are listening to a 31 Pearls production audiobook. Morals and Precepts, Chapter 24 Labor All men must toil on earth, not because they are born to servitude, but because they are heirs of God and must labor in his vineyard. Though a man be born to great riches and high estate, if he contribute not to life in accordance with his position, he is held unworthy in the eyes of God. Though a man may be a great land owner and have many servants, he may not have a stake in life. To be idle is to be a bystander at the parade of life, an onlooker when life has need of its champions. The idler holds no rank in the host of man, which ever advances into the unknown region of the future, towards its destiny in the eternal halls. The idler becomes a mere camp follower, straggling in the rear, a hanger-on in the company of those stalwarts who shoulder the burdens along the road towards the glorious heritage of man. All labor is vain unless done with purpose, and toil should not only be to sustain the body, but also to satisfy the spirit. The man who attacks the task with zest shows his love of life. The weaver should breathe something of himself into the threads and thus endow the cloth with something of his own nature. The builder should set the foundation with care and diligence, and erect the dwelling with devoted attention, as though it were to be the habitation of his own household. The husbandman should till the ground with loving care, and sow the seed with tenderness, as though the fruits thereof were for his own children. The craftsman should stamp his handiwork with his spirit, for all who fashion with their hands should leave their seal thereon. If you toil without satisfaction, if you labor with distaste, following a dull routine of drabness, then it were better you did not labor at all. A loaf baked with indifference sits heavily on the stomach. If a dwelling is built without care, it becomes the abode of discomfort. Do good wherever you can. Labor to the best of your ability, and gladness shall rule your heart. Toil is more your lot on earth than revelation. Speculation about divine things need not extend beyond the confines of your heart. All labor is not wholesome. He who toils half-heartedly or is careless in craftsmanship implants imperfection in his nature. He deals in deceit, and his toil emits an unseen thing, which, like some poisonous vapor, numbs his spirit. Never let any pastime eat up your substance, or become too costly, lest the anguish of payment exceed the pleasure it brings. Yet the life of man should be a healthy mixture compounded of its essential obligations, with refreshing leisure and pleasure added in moderation. However, leisure to be beneficial must be used wisely, and man should not ignore its snares. It is well to remember that leisure is not the same as idleness, which is the rust of time. During the enjoyment of leisure, avoid all burdensome, and unnecessary visits. Avoid the acclaim of the fickle multitude, which fawns upon the famous and notorious, for its acclaim has no substance. It is a garland of wind. Let leisure and pleasure never be overdone, and remember that pleasures oft repeated become wearisome. Let them be healthy and refreshing, but spend no time upon them unduly, nor make them your whole life. The joyful man labors diligently to fulfill his allotted task, but to the sad man 
Toil is a drug which removes him from the misery within himself. When labor is undertaken to provide for the needs of living or for satisfaction, then it is a natural activity. A slave is not always one who is bound. The knowledge and skill men gain to follow their craft suffice to provide for daily needs. But what of knowledge, which will deliver them from the yoke of life? Is that not the greatest attainment?